Good morning. Well, it may not be morning when you're listening to this, but it's morning when I'm recording it. I was reading something the other day, and it was a fairly common phrase that was being written, particularly in, in light of our current environment, our concern about the planet, and concern about uh, wildlife protection, and the term species at risk just sort of leapt off the page to me. And it wasn't that it wasn't an important article about some endangered wildlife. But I was thinking endangered wildlife, species at risk, people. Are we a species at risk? If we take literally the rhetoric, the political posturing, the global movement about climate change and global warming, which got conflated all the time as if they're the same thing, because climate change is reality and always has been. The climate is always changing. That's the control of the earth and the sun and a lot of other circumstances of which human activity is small. Global warming, is another matter based on, again, the natural occurrences of the earth and the sun. But there the impact of humans is, is not so small, it's quite large. And we've been learning as we all get smarter about the science. We're not scientists, but we read more, we listen to more, we investigate more of what the facts really are. Ice ages don't come and go in a hundred years or a thousand years. So what's happening right now is, is more immediate in terms of uh, jeopardy to our way of life uh, and our, our happiness and our convenience with how things are. Because as a species, we humans have kind of gotten used to things as they've been for the past couple thousand years and, and progress in so many fields, science particularly, and science and scientific development have given us enormous progress that has not just contributed to population explosion, but it has also you know, increased our, our way of life, our standard of living around the world in all countries, not just the developed countries, but also the developing countries, where our expectations of lifestyle, income, quality of life, quality of health, quality of air and water and food is an everyday concern for a lot of people. We can't just trust that, well, our government will make sure that things that should be regulated are properly regulated and that companies that are responsible money-making enterprises, capitalism's good, are, are not selling us products that are dangerous to us as a species and that are not dangerous to the planet in terms of messing with our quality of air and water and food and oceans and, and, and. We're, far more able to understand our situation today than ever in history. More people are aware of more science and no body of knowledge, current events around the world daily. We know what the weather's like halfway around the world. We know what the circumstances will be for crops, for production of all kinds of commodities, and with that rises and falls the price of things that we need. Coffee's going up because there's a crop failure in Brazil. Is that climate change? Is that global warming? Is that just bad luck? Is it an ongoing ebb and flow of supply and demand, nature, the weather? It's, it's a cruel recipe sometimes. 
And most recently on the west coast of Canada, we had a thing called an atmospheric river. I'd never heard of an atmospheric river, but I guess the, the cumulative amount of rainfall was like a river flowing inland and just doing a big dump that has you know, created havoc, a lot of damage, mudslides, flooding, and sadly, some, some tragic loss of life for people who were just driving along a roadway and suddenly a mudslide uh, enveloped them. Species at risk. Do we, do we need to be worried about obscure wildlife, spotted owls and fishes and amphibians? Yes, we do. Of course we do. And our knowledge and sensitivity on these things is heightened. And we have this, I think, heightened and new, just as atmospheric rivers, a new term in my lexicon, species at risk as it relates to humans is new. We need to worry about the polar bears. We need to worry about the, the cod fishery and various obscure kinds of, of animals that were once plentiful that are now scarce. Is that something that should just come and go unabated, that the, the, the laws of nature should apply and one species will overwhelm another or various things will make the population of, of a particular species decline? Should we just leave it alone? Let it be natural, untouched? Well, what about that species called humans? Should we mess with this, this species? Because we're at risk. But what degree of protection do we need? Do we need government intervention? Do we need laws and regulations? Do we need militants? We've been reading a lot of things in the news recently about some really heightened language around what people should or shouldn't do around pipelines and fossil fuels and rhetoric about what will happen if action isn't taken or enough action isn't taken soon enough. So there are always extreme points of view. There are always extreme situations. And sometimes we need to leaven that with some reality. We've got more people living on the planet than ever have. And perhaps we've reached the upper limit. We Maybe there will be some natural or legalized controls on our population. And I don't know if it should be about how many people there should be, but we're certainly more mindful of how many people can we feed. And yes, people are developing all kinds of new food products and artificial meats and things like that. And, and they all have their, their, their pros and cons and we should pay attention to them and be well informed before we put fake anything in our bodies and before we support wildly new industries selling us things that uh, might've been questionable before or might've been illegal before. Where does it all end? Hopefully with a healthier species. If, we, if this is a big zoo and we are the, the captured uh, caged critters of, of humans, is our species at risk? I hope not. I hope not. I hope a pandemic will soon be over and we will be less worried about COVID-19 and we'll begin to get concerned about the next pandemic because scientists have now made us aware that as we have a more populous planet who, and we all travel so much more, the risk of these things happening more often than every hundred years or so is, is heightened. And we need to be careful because we are a species at risk. We're at risk of infection, we're at risk of communicating things to one another. And more importantly, I think we're, our, our greater risk is fear. And you'd think with the largest population ever, the smartest population ever, every kind of knowledge available at our fingertips to more people than ever that we would be well informed. And I think what happens in the social media and 
traditional media worlds right now is we're drawn to headlines, we're drawn to sensational things, and we're getting a skewed view of, of reality. I don't think we should ignore the headlines and say, well, that's sensational and that's extreme, though sometimes it is. And I don't think we all need to become experts on every subject that we have to personally investigate everything, but we should be mindful of whose coverage on an issue we read. Is it a credible publication? Is it a credible source? Are these, yes, these are scientists, but are we hearing from the majority of scientists? And is there a contrary view? Because if we wish to not be a species at risk, we need to be a well-informed species. I want to live well. I want to live long. I want to live in a safe society on a healthy planet. Are we there today? No. Are we getting closer to healthier or are we getting closer to more dangerous? Depends who you talk to. Depends on who's got the bullhorn yelling the loudest some days. And most recently we've had all the countries of the world or most of the countries of the world gathering at COP26 to reach some sort of resolution on issues that they say are they're killing our planet, they're killing us. We're going to have global warming at a level that's intolerable. It's going to change life of every species on the planet as we know it, and we must put the brakes on. And yet collectively, the things that people are making the most noise about, coal uh, and other fossil fuels, but coal particularly, they couldn't reach agreement to abate the use of coal enough, fast enough to reach the agreement they all wanted. They wanted softer language. And large countries that use a lot of coal, like India and China, were among those who weren't prepared to go that far yet. So is the political and economic rhetoric real? Uh, I believe there's a lot of truth in it. Is the chest thumping practical in terms of getting society to move and change. I'm not so sure that that's the best strategy, but it certainly shouldn't be the only strategy of getting people to change. And I think before we expect governments to change, people need to change. If I'm at risk, I need to take care of my own backyard in terms of what I'm doing, in terms of my consumption, my behaviors that have an impact on the planet. And so do you. And so does everyone that you can influence. We all have a role to play. And I, I'd like to think that a year from now and five years from ten, and 10 years from now, we won't necessarily have these problems solved, but we'll be well on our road to things being measurably better. But here's the thing that I've learned about mankind in my observances is that when the pressure comes off, we relax. When the intensity of the fear and the worry abates, doesn't matter whether it's economic issues or the weather or the climate or crops or whatever, it seems when the, when the pressure is suddenly relieved that we've got through a, a hurdle, we've got over a hump if you will, that people relax and things tend to return to, dare I say, normal. We're in a world of a new normal. COVID-19, if it's taught us nothing else, it's that normal needs to be redefined and normal isn't necessarily desirable. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we humans on earth are a species at risk. The greatest risk is collective. The solution, however, is not collective, it's individual. Seven and a half billion of us have to behave differently. And that starts with, with me and you and everybody we talk to. I'm, I'm upbeat and optimistic, but I'm also sober and realistic. We have to protect ourselves and not rely on big governments 
for collective groups of governments or the United Nations to solve a problem for us. Because as we've learned, they're not always so good at solving problems. We, we need to take these matters into hand as our own initiative. So that's a wrap for me. My name is Mark Colby. Have a great day.